Hello guys, today we're gonna take a look under the hood of Little Nightmares 2 and see how some of the things in the game work by going out of bounds. Let's start right here in the main menu. To make sure that chapter selection screen loads instantly, developers just threw it under the menu map. Pretty normal practice and there is even mono chilling here as well, I'm not sure why though. Same thing here in the wilderness with the corridor from the starting cutscene. It's above the place Mono begins his adventure, but until then, he's locked inside this black box nearby, waiting to be teleported. By the way, all TVs have a little eye logo on the back. I don't think it's visible in a normal playthrough, but now you know. In the hunter's house, what about this guy? Where does he come from? Well, before the game triggers his animation, he's patiently waiting behind this cabinet out of player's sight. In fact, there are multiples of him waiting for you to cross certain points in the level. Let's go to the school chapter, but before that, here's a better view at what the hunter is doing in the scene where you sneak behind him. And to answer the popular question when he gets shot, he just disappears. Here's a following building at the end of the chapter and a zoom in into the alley in the beginning of school. Alright, school. Here's an interesting one. The corridor Mona sees on a TV during the tuning sections exists in the game a few hundred meters above the player and when you tune it, the image of the corridor gets projected on the TVs. As you move through the school, you have your first encounter with the teacher, but it's only a shadow. Here's what's happening inside the room. Note the peculiar pose she starts her animation in. It's so weird that even the devs were concerned, so they left a little message for the rest of the team to let everyone know that it's normal. After kidnapping Six, she and the kids just kinda go into the ceiling and eventually mostly disappear. So about this kid, he's drawing a lot of interesting things. If you take a look from above, you can see that he knows not only about the signal tower, but the janitor and the maw. Also a TV is here and a gnome. But the most interesting one is the door that Mona sees in his TV adventures. Does the student know the truth? Do you think it's the reason why he's been punished? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Speaking of the door, unless I'm seeing things, it has a 6 written on it. What could it mean? Do you want to know who's the teacher slapping in this scene? Well, it's a little bit awkward, but uh, yeah... I mean, at least she's not hurting anyone else, right? Seriously though, there is no reason to put a kid there if the player is never going to see it. Here's how the neck works though. Speaking of the neck working, look at this cutie. Let's go back after the scene ends and take a look at the vent. So, what I think happened here is that the vent teacher uses a different model and animations, so they had to use multiple teachers for this scene. From the piano to the vent is the normal game model, inside the vent special cutscene version, and then outside the school, they spawn the normal model again. And yeah, that, that's some long neck. I bet it could fit six for weeks. For the city background, it looks like this if you go there with the free cam. Moving on into the hospital, at the start there's this locked corridor with a patient in a wheelchair who actually looks like this. But what's more interesting is the corridor itself. You can kinda see it from the normal view, but after a few meters it begins to warp and then ends with the closed doors. I don't think anything else in the game is worth this much, except the signal tower, of course. Scene with the life support patient looks like this from behind the curtain.
And as for the incinerator, if you're quick enough, you don't even need to use a free cam to see how the toys burn. But here it is anyway. It just instantly swaps for the key and a pile of ash. And in case you were wondering, the key is not visible inside the toy, but it's most likely there, just invisible so it doesn't accidentally poke outside of the rabbit unless you use the X-ray. Here's a close-up of all the masks, including one in the garbage bin and on the shelves. Doctor is the same story as the toys, he just kinda rolls out of bounds and disappears. Did you know that you don't even have to burn him? You monster. Pale city, what a beautiful place. Fun fact about this dude, he's in two places at the same time. Before he even drops down, he's already in the TV, and after running inside the room, he just disappears. Pretty smart, considering there is no way to get there quick enough to see the transition. Here's a close view at the guy in the bath. He's, he's just chilling with the TV, nothing special. And a few shots of Pale City out of bounds. Oh, I like this one. Remember when Mona travels through the TV and sees the flash eye monster? That place is right here, out of bounds, right behind the room. And I can take you there. Just promise not to poke at the eyes. Oh yeah, N6 is actually in the TV and when you pull her out, her model changes color back to yellow. Thin Man also lives somewhere inside, but his model is cut a bit until he's ready to come out. Train scene looks like this from a different angle. This might be the biggest amount of stuff the game loads at the same time on any of the maps. Now let's go and see how the city zooms in in this cutscene, but first, here's Mona when he faces the Thin Man. And this is how the fight looks from Thin Man's side. Wait, no, actually I shot from all the sides. Oh, that's even better. And finally, this city collapsing. In the transmission chapter, as you come to these teleporters, the game spawns a second mono and for a short time you control both of them until character possession instantly changes from one to another. Let's do a flyby in the main hub area. Oh, in case you were wondering, the door that closes on mono in the very beginning expectedly does not lead anywhere. Not sure what the first picture is about, but the second one comes from the first game, and the third I think depicts the Moment 6-8 the runaway kit. What do you think? The suitcase is also supposed to be the one Six woke up in the mall. The amount and the placement of the tape checks out, but the pictures are edited and fuzzy. Could it be because Six doesn't remember it, or maybe Signal Tower is pulling it from the future? Although, with the time loop, does it even matter? Here's how the spooky door dimension looks like. As you come to the end of the map, it teleports you back, making it an infinite plane. 
the flesh throne works the same way. You go right, it teleports you a few times and then brings in the chair that is stored under the map. Okay, this is it for now. Hope you enjoyed a little peek behind the veil of Little Nightmares 2. If you did, consider subscribing, but for now I say goodbye.